Denis Villeneuve, the director behind Warner Brothers' movie adaptation of Frank Herbert's classic science fiction novel, recently released a scathing new editorial published by Variety magazine. After being blindsided by the news that Warner Brothers is set to release their entire 2021 slate of films simultaneously in theaters and on HBO Max, Villeneuve criticized the studio's parent company on what he calls a hijacking of one of the most respectable and important studios in film history. In it, he does acknowledge that streaming services are a positive and powerful addition to the movie and TV ecosystems, but the director remains adamant that these streaming platforms alone can't sustain the film industry as we knew it before COVID. In the article, Villeneuve acknowledged the importance of public safety and that in-theater viewing is not a great option for many people around the world right now. He explains that this is why he agreed with the decision to delay the movie's release to October of 2021, when he notes that vaccinations would be advanced and hopefully the virus behind us. He goes on to say, quote, There is absolutely no love for cinema, nor for the audience here. It is all about the survival of a telecom mammoth, one that is currently bearing an astronomical debt of more than $150 billion. Therefore, even though Dune is about cinema and audiences, AT&T is about its own survival on Wall Street. With HBO Max's launch a failure thus far, AT&T decided to sacrifice Warner Brothers' entire 2021 slate in a desperate attempt to grab the audience's attention. He continues, Warner Brothers' sudden reversal from being a legacy home for filmmakers to the new era of complete disregard draws a clear line for me. Filmmaking is a collaboration, reliant on the mutual trust of teamwork, and Warner Brothers has declared they are no longer on the same team. He then includes a statement that should prove to be chilling for most who are looking forward to his Dune adaptation when he says, Warner Brothers might have just killed the Dune franchise. He then goes on to talk about the tireless work and devotion on the part of his team over the past three years to meticulously design the image and sound in crafting this film in order to make it a unique, big screen experience referring to the film as by far the best movie he's ever made. He then stops just short of calling for the decision to be reversed, as he writes, Just as I have both a fiduciary and creative responsibility to fulfill as the filmmaker, I call on AT&T to act swiftly with the same responsibility, respect, and regard to protect this vital cultural medium. AT&T and HBO Max have also come out to defend this controversial decision, with the AT&T CEO, John Stanky, saying recently that, quote, I think when we just are being really honest about this, there's a win-win here. He added, we think it's a great way for us to penetrate the market faster and quicker. Fellow director Judd Apatow and Hollywood's Directors Guild have also joined Villeneuve in criticizing the studio's decision in recent days. Director Christopher Nolan commented on the matter as well recently, saying, some of our industry's biggest filmmakers and most important movie stars went to bed the night before thinking they were working for the greatest movie studio and woke up to find out they were working for the worst streaming service. Warner Brothers had an incredible machine for getting a filmmaker's work out everywhere, both in theaters and in the home, and they are dismantling it as we speak. A few members of Villeneuve's Dune cast have also come to his defense, Jason Momoa and Josh Brolin both shared Villeneuve's variety piece on their social media pages and encouraged their followers to read the director's quote, important article on why moving the film to HBO Max is such a big deal. Momoa and Brolin echoed Villeneuve's closing comments in his article by adding, long live the theater experience. It's hard to tell whether or not Villeneuve truly thinks that this move will threaten the future of his Dune film franchise or if he's just saying that to apply more pressure to Warner Brothers and AT&T. His comments about a line being drawn seem to indicate that he would be unwilling to move forward with being involved in future Dune projects if the parent company doesn't reverse course. Overall, given these remarks by Villeneuve, it seems at this point in time that the planned Dune sequel and HBO Max spin-off TV series about the Bene Gesserit may not happen after all. Many Dune fans have been longing for a faithful and high-quality modern film adaptation of Frank Herbert's beloved series, and from what we've seen of Villeneuve's film so far, it seems that Legendary and Warner Brothers were on track to deliver that. Given that this movie only covers the first two-thirds of Frank Herbert's first book, it would be tragic if we weren't able to see its completion with a second film. 
While I certainly hope that AT&T and Warner Brothers will be willing to act to address Villeneuve's concerns and keep him on board for the sequel, I also hope that Villeneuve is willing to at least finish out his adaptation of Herbert's novel with the second film. While the shock of what happened is surely still ringing loudly with all who were involved in the Dune film, along with the other projects which are set to release in the same way, I hope that in time, cooler heads will prevail to settle on a solution in which both the artistic and corporate sides of these properties can continue to work to deliver the content that fans are dying to see. Given that these comments and Warner Brothers' decision is so fresh, I can't help but think that the situation is far from resolved. Legendary Entertainment, the production company for many of these projects, is setting up to take legal action against Warner Brothers. According to Deadline, quote, Legendary certainly seems to have the right to challenge Warner Media on its decision. Legendary and its partners provided 75% of the $165 million or so net budget of Dune. The adaptation of the Frank Herbert novel that was envisioned to be the first of multiple films exploiting the six novel series. It put up a similar amount of the funding on the Godzilla vs. Kong film. So all in all, it seems that AT&T and Warner Brothers will have some hurdles to cross before the premiere of these films in order to come up with a better resolution to the issues they face. Much of it, I'm sure, will rely on the global situation, especially involving the capacity of movie theaters moving forward. Personally, while I was happy that there was a failsafe in place with the simultaneous distribution of the film to theaters and streaming, in case theater going simply wasn't an option for me at that time, I do think that Warner Brothers was a bit premature making this decision so soon. After all, Dune is still almost a year away. It seems that this year, studios have been making choices based on the current situation as the need arises. So I would think that with the uncertainty of what the coming months will bring, playing it by ear would be a much better approach. Ultimately, my preference is to see this film in an IMAX setting so as to fully enjoy Villeneuve's and his team's tireless work. So if Warner Brothers reconsiders their decision and this results in another delay, while frustrating, I'll be ready to give that decision my support out of respect for all the work that has been done to bring us this adaptation. This is definitely a developing story, so I'll continue to do the best I can to keep you up to date on the latest developments with this battle. But let me know what you think about Vilnav's comments. Do you think this potentially could spell the end of Warner Brothers' Dune franchise? Let me know in the comment section below. I hope you enjoyed this video. Leave a like if you did, and be sure to subscribe for more Dune and other sci-fi and fantasy content. Thank you all so much for your support, and as always, have a very nerdy day.